Welcome back, Brights. Today we're going to be reviewing some Oralex acoustic foam. They make the best acoustic foam in the business. We're going to install it in three different areas. A large studio area that's very echoey, a vocal booth, which obviously we got to have good vocals in there, and also this office area. We're going to do some tests in the vocal booth in the large studio area to see how it sounds, and we're going to show you how we install it all. So let's check it out. So let's start with the vocal booth. This is our brand new vocal booth. No treatment is in here and the sound is super terrible for recording music inside of. So I'm excited to show you guys how to install the Oralex foam in a vocal booth and also make sure you stick to the end of the video to see the before and after of each room. So our goal with this vocal booth is to get it as dead as possible. We want the driest sound in this room that we could possibly get. So when we process vocals for our recordings, we really compress the signal a lot. So that's why we want to get this room to be as dead and dry as possible. So that way we could really bring the signal up and we won't be compressing the room noise at all. We want it just to be dry, vocal, and that's it. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use a lot of foam, really fill this room up with as much foam as possible. And hopefully it works out. Let's see how it goes. So here is what's going inside of our vocal booth. We got burgundy and charcoal for the colors. And this is actually a ruminator kit, Alpha DST ruminator kit, which makes it super, super easy to get everything you need to sound treat a room easily without having to sit and pick every little thing you need. And installation is super easy. It comes with peel and stick adhesive, so that's gonna be easy. So like I said before, we got the Alpha DST Ruminator Kit, which comes with 32 DST-112 Studio Foam Panels, 32 DST-114 Studio Foam Panels, four Be Leonard Bass Traps. So uh, let's go ahead and get these out of the box. So these are the 112s. This is what they look like. Pretty cool. Let's get them out of here. We got more 112s. These are the 114s, and they look like this. And we got burgundy and charcoal, which is awesome. Okay, now I gotta get these out. Oh goodness. More 114s. Probably, unless these are more one Yeah. Yep. The same things. And these must be the base traps. And this is the base traps. So let's go ahead and start installation. I really want to give a big thanks to Joe at Oralex for helping us with our room analysis. This is going to be very helpful when installing our vocal booth foam. So thank you so much. Um, if you guys want to check it out, they have room analysis services on their website. All right, so we wanted to figure out which design we're going to use as far as how we're going to rotate the panels. Um, we came up with two designs. Um, we heard that rotating 90 degrees every time is the best acoustically. And that's what we did in this little design here. As you can see, each time we rotate it 90 degrees. And then this one up here was a design that we saw on the website. I feel weird calling it a design. It's really just patterns. And it's kind of rotating at 90 degrees going down, but then the one, the row after it, each row is flipped and it kind of makes a cool look to it, but I don't think it really makes sense acoustically as much as just rotating 90 degrees every time. And ideally we just want this to sound as good as possible, not really look as good as possible. So, and the main issue is if you, you'll see every once in a while with that design, um, sometimes the lowest part of the angle of the panel touches. So you have two low parts of the foam touching and I feel like that kind of gives weak points in the structure of how they're laid out. And that never happens when you do it 90 degrees every time. So I think that's what we're gonna go with. We're gonna go with the 90 degree rotations. So on this thing that came in the box, it shows me how many stickers I should put for the base trap. So that's what I'm gonna do. Put three on each side. Looking at our room analysis, the first base trap is going to be in this top corner, all the way at the top, all the way up there. So I gotta take all the sticky things off. It's gonna be your first ever acoustic foam placement. How do you feel about that? Good. All right. Moment of truth. I'm gonna go all the way up. Don't screw it up. Uh, I hope I don't. Can you get high enough? Want me to do it? Is it in? It's in. There All right. It is. Here's our first thing. The base is trapped. <sighs> at least in that corner. <laughs> this is going to be permanent. From 
not in the corner, though. It's not? It's not in the corner? Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Alright, do the other two that go in those corners. Now these are going to be over the vocal booth window a little bit. Just flip this around because we felt like it made more sense to catch the sound waves like this as opposed to just like bouncing off this wall. It's hard to explain, but Sabrina's going to be singing this way into the vocal booth, so it just makes more sense. And that allows us to make the opposite of this one facing that way, so that way it's, it just makes sense, I guess. Alright, so, <laughs> so be careful of this because we don't stick it in the corner for, like, kind of like, hold the flaps away from the wall before it sticks to the wall, you know what I mean? Like, so you can get it snug in the corner. And then press the sides. Oh, oh that's in there good. Yeah, is the other side by the window, like, stuck to anything? Well... It's not, is it? Huh? This side? Yeah. Yeah, it's not. I'm just gonna say one thing right now. All we have is three bass traps in here, and it already sounds probably 50% better. Yep. That's crazy. So this one, probably like that, right? Yeah. Nope, that's a... Yeah. So we just finished installing the ceiling. Now we're gonna move on to the walls. So we made some changes to the plan. Originally, there was only one bass trap up there, and then it went down a few with some of these regular square panels. However, we feel as though, since this is where Sabrina's gonna be singing, we're gonna have the mic here, she's gonna be singing into this corner, that we need to be really taking advantage of as much um, corner foam as we can with these bass traps. We gotta fill in these corners here. Before, like, it wasn't really filled in there. So what we're gonna do is use some of the bass traps that we have for the plans downstairs. I feel like it's more important that we treat this vocal booth as best as possible than just like some of the corners downstairs. We might need to buy some more of this if we need to. But for now, I think this is the best bet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add another one of these here, maybe another one right here, and then we're gonna have some extra square panels that we could do whatever we want with. So we're changing the plans a little bit, but uh, all right, so what's the best way to do this? Wow, why does this panel look different than that one? It is different. This is from a different kit. No! <laughs> All right, so it is in fact a different bass trap. But we're gonna do it anyway. The puzzle pieces are coming out. It's definitely gonna do a lot better for the audio if these would stay. I think the issue we're having with these not sticking to the wall isn't necessarily to do with the adhesive but it's to do with the type of paint we have on our walls. <laughs> I just don't think it really plays nice with it. So should we stick another one right there? I don't know, let's Do see it. it, let's check it out. Dude, this is like so dead sounding already and there's not even a rug. This is the final product. As you can see, we added two extra bass traps right there for the corner. Because we're gonna have our microphone right here. And then because of that, we had two left over for right here. And actually I believe we added those two down there too. Um, and this is where the vocals are gonna be saying, so we figured we gotta make sure that this corner is as dead as possible. And that's how it came out. So let's go ahead and do the test and see how it compares. This is the Neumann TLM-103 condenser microphone. This is a Neumann TLM-103 condenser microphone. This is the Rode NTG-1 shotgun microphone. This is the Rode NTG-1 shotgun microphone. And this is the camera audio from our A7S II. And this is the camera audio from our Sony A7S II. 
So go ahead, let it out. Put your heart on the line. Sharpen lead, a silent shout with pretty words that rhyme. So go ahead, let it out. Put your heart on the line. Sharpen lead, a silent shout with pretty words that rhyme. Welcome to our video studio. As you can tell, it's very echoey in here. This is not ideal at all. So we're going to try to put some foam on these walls using Oralex foam and hopefully by the end of this video it's not going to sound like this anymore. <laughs> So now we're gonna do the audio tests for our video room. And as you can see, the panels are in the shot. That's because we're using a fisheye lens and we didn't wanna move the camera so you could see everything while we're putting the panels up. Normally, if we were doing the shot and I'm talking to the camera, I'd use an 85 millimeter lens or a 50 millimeter lens and that'd be close enough to where you don't see the panels in the shot. It would just be my face. However, the panels would be there because they definitely help with absorption. And these panels are awesome. We could just put them wherever we want and just kind of play with it and see what works. Also, I'm not sure how well it comes off in video, but this room is absolutely massive. It was very, very echoey before, so I wasn't expecting a huge difference from just foam. And um, we do plan on putting a carpet down and we're gonna have a green screen up. So there's gonna be other things that are gonna make the room a little quieter, but I wasn't expecting a huge difference and I can't wait to hear the difference when we listen back to the tests. However, even with just an empty room and foam, I could tell there already is a pretty big difference. So that's pretty awesome, but let's check out the tests. Check one, two, this is the Rode NTG-1 shotgun microphone. Check one, two, this is the Rode NTG-1 shotgun microphone. And this is the camera audio from the Sony a7S II. And this is the camera audio from the Sony a7S II. Rode shotgun microphone, shotgun microphone. A7S II. Sony a7S II. Now we're gonna test the drums and for the acoustically treated shot, we're gonna move these panels closer to the drums because these portable panels are kind of made to just move around and that's kind of what we're gonna do. So let's test it out. For the record, we're doing it off center because you gotta kind of see me for this video. <laughs> Cool sound. 
So this is our office slash recording area slash editing area slash gaming area. We do pretty much all of our work here and we needed to kind of sound treat the high vaulted ceiling echo up here just so we could at least mix decently for our music. So we've just thrown some sono flats in here on each side of the window behind our computer area and a little bit on the knee high wall. Um, and it definitely has made a difference. Of course, we also have the portable panels, so those will help as well. We aren't gonna do a sound test here because this is just mostly for us to listen back through our monitors and it's not really fully sound treated in here, so there's no use in doing that. But that's what we did here and we just wanted to show you and also thank you so much once again to Oralex for helping us out with this. So the last thing that I haven't included um, in all of our setup is the Mopad monitor isolators. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead, put those under our monitors and I think we will be done with all of the Oralex sound treatment. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed our review of the Oralex Acoustic Foam. Overall, we're extremely happy with how it sounds and also how it looks. And I hope you guys learned that it's really easy to install with our little installation tips there. So overall, I recommend Oralex Acoustic Foam. If you wanna check out their website, links in the description, you can buy it for yourself. Make your home studio sound awesome. I wanna say special thanks to Oralex for hooking us up with all this foam. We'll see you guys next time.